Hey everyone, Mr. Schachter here with Continuity Part 2. Very excited. Let's get started. Uh, objectives here to determine extrema coordinates for the given function. A bit of a refresher in regards to extrema. You can have either local or absolute extrema. Uh, an absolute extrema is the highest or lowest point on the function in general, okay? Whereas a local max or a local min, local extrema, are in a neighborhood. So in a specific area, in an interval, uh, do you have a value that's higher than the rest or lower than the rest? Um, so that's kind of a, a brief overview. Here's an important piece for you. If a function is continuous on a closed interval, a to b, then f of x has both an absolute max and an absolute minimum on that interval. So if it's continuous and the interval is closed, you have to have a high point, you have to have a low point. Um, in calculus, we're going to word it like this. Uh, we say that f of x has a max of 6, so this is like the y value or the function value, located at x equals 3. So a max of 6 at x equals 3. So we're giving the x value and the y value simultaneously. Let's take a look at this brief example. Um, it says, in an open interval, in an open interval, interval. A quick tidbit before we get started. In an open interval, endpoints are not maxes or mins. Let's take a look at an example to kind of explore why. Suppose we have the, uh, the function y equals x squared. It looks like a parabola like this. And actually, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to delete the arrows on it. We're just going to go like this and like this. Suppose I have this function right here, okay? Um, we don't have an absolute maximum here because the function's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger because we can never actually, because of these parentheses, we can never actually equal negative 1 or 1. So basically, we're getting extraordinarily close to negative 1 and extraordinarily close to 1, but we're never going to reach that value. So our y values are getting bigger and bigger. So we don't actually have an absolute max there. This particular function at, uh, at 0 has a minimum of 0. It's right here. So this function has an absolute minimum at x equals 0. Okay, so let's try some examples. All right, uh, example number 1, using the function, find the coordinates for all extrema. So let's take a look at x squared on the closed interval 0 to 3, a brief picture. So um, if you plug in 0, you get 0, so it's right here. And if you plug in 3, uh, 3 squared is 9, so it's just going to be somewhere like up here. So you have this little parabolic piece right here. So the question is, where are the uh, extrema? Now, this is a continuous function on a closed interval, so you're guaranteed to have at least a maximum and a minimum, okay? The maximum of this function, the max, is 9 at x equals 3. And the min is 0 at x equals 0. Okay, so because we have a closed interval and a continuous function, we're guaranteed to have a max and a min. There are no other local extrema in this particular function. It's just simply increasing indefinitely. Uh, and this one we just did at the top, so we don't really need to talk about it. Here's some more examples to consider. At what value of x, so we don't have to find the y value here, uh, what value of x over the given interval does a function take on a max or a min value? Let's first examine the cosine function, okay? So if we remember, um, we're going from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So that's actually pretty simple because negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, we know cosine is 0. So the cosine function is like right here, 0. And then we know that uh, cosine of 0 is 1. So this right here is a brief glimpse into what the cosine function looks like from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Um, we only need to find the x values here. We don't have to find the y values. So we know that this cosine function contains a maximum, a maximum at x equals 0, and it contains a minimum at both x equals plus and minus pi over 2. So both of those values, uh, both of those values is going to be a minimum value of 0, of course. Let's take a look at another example. This example, letter B, is a, uh, looks like it's a quadratic function. It's uh, in vertex form, so we could probably just, you know, throw in a graph real quick. Um, so it's got, uh, it's a vertex form, so its vertex is located at uh, the coordinate 2 comma 1. So 2 comma 1 is like right here. And um, if you plug a 1 into this function, let's try plugging in a 1 in. We plug a 1 in here, we get 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Squared is 1 plus 1 is 2. So it's up here, so 1 comma 2. And then um, if, we, uh, if we plug in values that are a little larger, like 2, 3, and 4, it's likely just going to increase to some, to some value. And uh, this is our quadratic. Actually, I'm not going to put an arrow on the end of it. We're just going to go like uh, this, some value at 4. 
Um, in a sense, I don't need to find the y value. I really don't have to worry about what that value is, but we do know, it's safe to say, that uh, at 2, at x equals 2, we have our a minimum. So a minimum at x equals 2. And uh, we also know that we're going to have a maximum at, uh, at x equals 4. Max at x equals 4. Uh, and this is a closed interval, so we're guaranteed to have a minimum and a maximum. And it's safe to say that the value at 4 is going to exceed the value at 1. So I'm, I'm safe to say that you can do the math out if you'd like, but um, that's all we really needed. Okay, let's do another one. Uh, this next one, it's f of x equals x, nice linear function from 0 to 2. Well, that nice linear function from uh, 0 to 2 just kind of looks like this. And I use open circles because we're an open interval. This thing has no absolute extrema because you can't use endpoints to classify a maximum or a minimum. So this thing has none. This linear function, uh, na, we'll just put na right there, squeeze it in. Last, f of x equals 1 over x. So this is a rational. Let's get a new color. Let's use a nice blue. This is a rational function. It looks a little something like this. Um, and we're talking about an infinite domain here, so negative infinity to infinity. This has no absolute extrema. Because it's it's rising, it's rising up, it's rising up forever, and it's rising down forever, so its function value is never going to actually cap at a certain number. So this has no absolute extrema as well.